Hello all, welcome back. In this session, we will be looking into how to build multi-node Cassandra cluster. In the earlier sessions, we have set up two nodes and we have configured the static IP install Java and then configured the AML file. Now, we need to ensure that these two nodes join a single cluster and communicate with each other. Let's start on the VMware Workstation Pro now I will show a different way of uh, opening the nodes. Earlier we used to use VMware player. Now we can also use VMware workstation. Go to file, scan for virtual machines and click on next by choosing the path where you have saved virtual machine. It will show the nodes, node 1, node 2, whatever you have given the names. Click on finish. So these are the two nodes. Let me open power on the virtual machine and I'm opening the second node as well so these are the two nodes which I have already set up node 1 and node 2 node 1 is having an IP of 143 and node 2 is having an IP of 144 now let's go ahead and open mobile xterm both the nodes are up now let me use mobile xterm to log into these two nodes 143 and 144 so these two are the nodes open multi execute mode so that i can log into both at a time the user and the password if i ask the same password which you have given earlier i want to show you the difference between the cassandra yaml files in 143 we have one yaml file and 144 we do have another yaml file so what is the difference between these two yaml files the configurations let us see the left one is belongs to node 1 which is a seed and the ip is 143 the right one is the listener node or the other node whose ip is 144 let me check the difference so listener address will be the ip address of itself and then rpc address also will be the ID address of itself here it is 143 and here it is 144 that's it only these two are the differences the listen address and rpc address these two will be its own address and if you see the seed the seed is same 143 and 143 so how many of our nodes you are going to add the seeds should be the same and the listen address and rpc address should be its own address and the rest of the things remain same and ensure that we have same cluster name and we have rack dc properties file let me show you cassandra conf ls you can see cat cassandra rack dc properties here you can check dc equals to dc1 rack equal to rack1 the same dc equal to dc1 and rack equal to we are we are taking two nodes of same data center into one cluster okay so so we have seen the difference between two cassandra yaml files now are we ready to start the cassandra nodes who oh, hold on before starting the nodes let's check the firewall what is this firewall in unix we have the firewall which allows or blocks the ports so if the firewall is blocking the required ports that are used by cassandra the nodes could not communicate with each other so in order to facilitate these nodes to communicate with each other we should ensure that the firewall do not block the required ports now let's check the status of the firewall for that we have a simple commands first one is systemctl status firewall d we will check the status in both the nodes it is enabled and it is active and it is run it is running let us check what are the active zones that are available firewall hyphen cmd space hyphen hyphen get active zones so these i will be keeping in the website you can copy from there directly or even you can google so let me check what are the active zones in both the nodes. I have the public active zone 
and the interface are same so I have the active zone as public let me check what are all the ports open what are all the service everything so for this it asks us to execute as a root let me log in as root and then execute it okay so i have the ports i do not have any ports being allowed by firewall it is not allowing the required ports of cassandra so what do i do now i need to ensure that the firewall do not block the required ports what are the ports required for that let's go to data stacks and it has given we need the port number 22, 7000, 7001, 7001, many things. Among these, I need the Cassandra internal cluster communication, so 7000. And I also need client port for SQL to run 9042. So for now, I am going to use only these two ports. Whenever you want to use the JMX monitoring port or any other thrift connection, you can enable those ports as well. The similar way, how I am going to do now. Just simple command add ports to file firewall we have firewall cmd and the zone we have seen with active zones what are the active zones i have the public so to the public i am adding the port 7000 and 9042 and it will be the permanent and if you want to undo you can keep remove in the place of add and the zone could be anything whatever you have it could be public internal or anything so let me go ahead and add the ports saying some error let me take something here let me use hyphen hyphen so it's success now we have added the ports and to immediately bring this into effect i need to run one more command firewall cmd reload enter so it's again success now let me go ahead and check the list all again there it is you can see port 7000 tcp and 9042 these two are added now we have set the firewall to accept the ports we are going to start both of our cassandra nodes before starting the cassandra nodes and show that we have data folder inside the Cassandra folder. See, this is the data, and if I see the permissions of data, I have full permissions right access. If you do not have, just use chmod as universal access to data so that we won't have any issues with the permissions. So, let me clear and let's start with the seed node. The seed node should be started first. cd bin dot slash cassandra minus f minus f because i want to see what's going on in the foreground if it is background we don't know what's going on we need to once you start the seed node now we will start the next node cd pin dot slash cassandra minus f now we have started both the nodes let's see whether both will communicate with each other or not if you see here starting listening for sql and if you see a 144 144 has connected to 143 144 is the rightmost and 143 is the seed node let's go ahead and check in other node uh, to open the new window you can go to the settings go to the miscellaneous and click on allow multiple instance of mobile xterm so that you can open a new instance let me start a new one again so that the servers will be running over there and i can do the required operations over here let me go to multi execute log in both 
let's go to cassandra now i want to check whether both are in one cluster or not let me go to bin and node tool status let's see whether the both the nodes are in the same cluster or not there it is you can find both on 43 and on 44 are up and normal and both belong to data center one and these are in the same cluster so node tool status gives that both are in the same cluster let's go ahead and open sql sh SQL SH 192.168.202.143 in one and 144 in the second one. Let me execute. There it is. We were able to access the SQL SH. Let's go ahead and create a key space in node 1 so that when I create a key space here, the same key space should be automatically replicated to node 2. And inside that key space, I'm going to create one table and I'm going to insert a record. The same thing should be replicated to other node as well. Okay. Now let's check what are all the key space we have. Key space are nothing but similar to schema in Oracle. I already have a script create key space learn mode on with replication equals to class. The class would be network topology strategy and dc1 is the data center that i am using and this 2 means it's a replication of 2 that means i need two copies for each item either it could be a key space and the table in key space and the data as well now i have only one data center so i have maximum dc1 if i have two more data centers i would keep dc2 in dc2 i want a replication of two or three if i have more nodes so for now, as I have only single data center, I'm going to use only one DC one. Let me create the key space. I'm going to disable the right node and then in node one, I'm going to create it. All right, I have created a key space. Now let me check in both nodes. Describe key space. You see that learn mode on and here learn mode on. The same thing is reflected. Now let's go ahead and create a new table in node 1. And disabling node 2 and create table learn mode on dot test table column 1 of type text and it is primary key. Now I have created table. Let me check. Use learn mode on and describe tables. It will list now what are all the tables are. So we have the table in both the nodes. When I have created in node one, the same is replicated to node two. That now let me disable node one and insert a record via node two. Insert into learn mode on dot test table and column name is column one values of sample data and press enter now let me check in both the nodes select star from learn mode on dot test table you see that first I have created key space and table in node 1 the same is replicated to node 2 now I have tried to create data using node 2 the same is replicated to node 1 so the replication happens across the data center to whichever the node the data may come it will replicate the data based on its replication factor which we have configured we have given it as two so it has saved two copies of data this is it for today now we have successfully set up a cluster in linux servers 
In a similar way, you can set up a multi-node cluster. You can add as many number of nodes you want. You, the only thing you have to remember is the seed node remains the constant or you could add two, three more nodes as well. And the listen node and RPC address will be of its own IP address. In the next video, we shall see how to use data stacks in Windows. And thereafter, we shall proceed into the main Cassandra codes. Thank you. Thank you for watching.